And for me, I consider it like going grocery shopping, you know? When I was married, I used to be given a list. And the list was so perfect, it went something like this. If I turned down aisle one, and the first, and I saw the second item, I knew I had missed the first item because it was behind me. Literally, the list was down the aisle, find the item. Item one was the first thing I was going to pass. Item two was the next, and I had to work the store in a certain way. And that's, this was just going to fall right into the basket. Sizes were written down. No thinking. Just take the stuff, go home. No grief, no nothing. You get credit for the grocery shop, and all life is good, right? You know, you get the attaboy, you did the grocery shop, and thank God you can do something. You know? But I turned down the cereal aisle. And it says, cereal, your choice. Oh, Dennis gets to make a decision today. You know, this is the extent of my decisions, you know, cereal choices and stuff. So I walk up to the cereal aisle and I go, hmm, Count Chocula or Peanut Butter Captain Crunch or Crack? Where did that thought come from? You know, I'm here grocery shopping and it hits me just like that, out of nowhere. And at that moment, the cereal aisle goes blank. And my mind goes, well, the cell station sells the glass stems. The hardware store has the chore. If I don't buy the meat, I'll have 40 bucks. It's 10.30. She's not going to be home till 2. The guys are always behind the Dunkin' Donuts off of, I won't say the street. <laughs> That's where they are. And no one will ever know. And I just planned my relapse, didn't I? Just like that. With no intentions of doing it, but it happens just like that. And if it was back in the day, I wouldn't have had the ability to turn that switch off. Because like that switch just got thrown. It just got thrown, right? So what enough of this program does is if you practice these things, and you need to practice them in here, guys and girls, you know, you need to practice them in here. This is the best, safest place in the world to practice those things. The praying, the reading, the calling your sponsor, and the going to a meeting. You know, it's time to give up calling your mom at night when the phones open up at 9 o'clock and go, I got 18 days, you know, as if they're supposed to congratulate you for doing what you should have been doing all along. You know, we expect parades and balloons and stuff like that for finally doing something right, you know. But also realize this, and I'm telling you the truth when I say this, all of your parents expect you to screw this up, okay? They totally expect you to screw this up. They are still not sleeping at night. They are expecting you to walk in the door tomorrow night going, all right, I yelled at the counselor, she kicked me out. You know, or something equally stupid. And beg for your house back, and beg for your life back, and beg for some money to go back to your apartment, because you've lied to them so many times about how many times you were going to change, and how things were going to be different this time. <coughs> you've done it so many times that they don't believe this is real either, okay? Why would they? Why should they? You know, you need to give them a chance to go sleep at night too, to close both eyes finally, you know, and realize. And you know, and to be honest with you, the fact that you're here, at least they know you're not dead. You know, at least they know you're going to live. Because that's what they're expecting. You know that, right? I mean, they expect you guys to die. All right? So we're not doing them any favors, calling them up at 9 o'clock at night and going, all right, one more day, I ate the food, I stayed, all right, you know. You know, big deal, okay? You know, it's time to stand up, man up, you know. And it's time to call your sponsor at 9 o'clock at night and tell your sponsor what your day was like because he's going to save your butt because if the cereal aisle moment comes along if you get on the phone and you call your mom up and you go mom I'm standing in the cereal aisle and Pump Chocula wants me to smoke some crack <laughs> you know she's going to say you're a loser you've always been a loser you're just like your father <laughs> or she's going to say something like come home I'll make meatloaf you know, she doesn't know what to say. She's not one of us. She has no clue what that thought is. You know, but if you pick up the phone and you call me, and you go, Dennis Calchocula is saying some nasty things, I'm going to tell you, well, don't look at Captain Crunch. He does heroin. You know, like whatever you do, you know. <coughs> Stay away from Lucky Charms, you know. You know Those are the magic mushroom people right there, you know. And the ones that are mocking me, you know, I'm talking about Rice crispy guys, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Crackle? Is that an insult to me or what? What is Crackle? A little crack? What is a Crackle? All right, so the cereal aisle is a dangerous place for us. But if you call me up on the phone and say Count Chocula is talking back to me, I'll say to you, okay, I know how to get you over to Frozen Foods. I do. All right? Because no one gets high over by ice cream. All right? Ice cream.